This is more than a plugin to create pop-ups on your website. Instead, it's a plugin to track conversions, how many people clicked on a button or filled out a form on your website. It's also great for guiding your website visitor on exactly what you want them to do next. But then you also get to track how many people actually did go to that next step. You can also schedule your content for specific days or specific times during the week. But what really makes this difference is two things. Number one, you get to add all the power of the WordPress block builder and the dynamic content sources into these. And if you pair this with the Cadence Blocks Pro plugin, which has dynamic content features, you can also have dynamic content inside of your pop-ups. And I'm going to show you that in this video. So buckle up. We have a lot to cover in this video. Now let me start with the great news. Cadence Conversions is going to be included in the bundle that you can get for Cadence. So you don't have to go and purchase this separately, although I'm sure it will be available at some point for separate purchase. But everyone that has the full bundle or the lifetime bundle that they have on their website is going to get access to this next week, early November. So you already get a ton of amazing stuff with this and it's perfect for any web creator. Uh, what I think is most stunning to me though is that just this year alone they have added two new plugins. They've added new blocks to Cadence Blocks Pro. They added dynamic content. They are also revamping this shop kit plugin right here which adds a bunch of really cool and needed features to WooCommerce but now they're also adding Cadence conversions to this bundle. Uh, if you don't have the Cadence bundle, I'll have a link down below, or you can just head on over to their website and you can check it out for yourself. Now, when you add Cadence to conversions to your website, you're going to have a new menu item. You could see it right here. It just says conversions. And when you click into it, it's going to take you a list of the pop-ups that you have built and some snapshot information about them. Now, keep in mind, this is a beta version of this. There are some enhancements that they are going to be adding that are not quite here. Let me show you one of those. So when I go into the dashboard right here, here is where the stats will show uh, of your conversions. But you can see we don't quite yet have filtering options uh, to show this data based on the pop up that was used to generate this conversion nor adding adding in any date ranges. This is something that will be coming to the plugin, but it won't be when this launches. Now, there's also a settings option here where you can choose whether or not you want the analytics to be stored locally on your website or if you want to pass off all your analytics off to Google Analytics if you already have all your stats and analytics there already. So let me walk you through the process of creating one of these pop-ups. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Add New and we're going to be immediately presented with the three different pop-up types that are available right now. I actually don't even like saying pop-ups because this is not pop-ups. You can see right here we have banners. Banners aren't really pop-ups, right? If you have a banner notice on the top of your website, that is not a pop-up. Let me actually just show you that right now. So let's first go ahead and create a banner and then we're presented with some templates. So it's going to be a little light on the templates right now, but the templates that are provided can easily be tweaked to fit your use case. I actually don't even know what I would do differently for one of these banners. So let me go ahead and choose this one, but let me actually show you this right here. This uh, is configured to appear at the bottom of your website and it's just a, basically a cookie notice. Uh, actually, here's another one at the bottom that's a cookie notice, but let me show this one here at the top. Uh, there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and put a title in. All right. And I put that in and this is just using the WordPress block builder. I can just point and click and change anything that I want. I can change out this icon. I can change this button. I can easily point and click and change the text and all the info for the settings and changing the style is going to be right here on the right. I do recommend when you're using this th though to always have list view open. So when you click on this icon right here, it says list view and it will show you all the elements that are making up this piece of content. So if you want to go into the settings of the 
pop-up. I'm just going to call it pop-ups. That's kind of easy. Uh, it's right here where it says conversion item. And then we have this list of options right here. The first being, when are we going to show this? So for a banner like this, we would probably want this to show when the page loads, but we have lots of different options. We have Time delayed, if you want it to show after five seconds. Exit intent, that's when the mouse leaves the web browser. Uh, scroll distance, that's when the user has scrolled a certain distance down the page. We've got end of content, we've got on load, which I'm gonna choose. And you can also make this appear when someone clicks on a link. So let's choose on load. And then right here where it says target pages, I'll click on that and show on, I'll just have this show on the front page, my home page. There we go, and I'll click on publish. I'll click on publish again. It's published. Let's go ahead and take a look at the front end of the website, and you can see there it is. The banner is appearing, and what I like about this, and I've seen other tools not do this, and it's like, oh my gosh, didn't you think of that? The banner pushes the content down. I really like that versus having it cover the he header items. I can never understand why tools sometimes just cover the content versus pushing it down. You can see this is the other pop-up that I created, which is a cookie notice uh, right here. So let's dig a little deeper. I'm back on the list of the different conversion items that I've created. I've You can see the one I just created, top banner, and you can see it's showing me the type. It's showing me the trigger, which is on load, where it's actually showing and who gets to see it. So you might be familiar with a lot of these options if you have the Cadence Pro theme and you're using their elements feature. So you can have this be visible to just certain user roles on your website, maybe people that are logged in or not logged in. And there's lots of different targeting rules that you can have. All right, let's go ahead and create a new conversion item. And this time I'm going to choose a pop-up right here. We also have this slide in option, but I'll choose the pop-up. And here are some additional templates that we have. These are your traditional uh, pop-ups to maybe display a product is on sale or you have some promotion going on or to capture someone's email. I'll go ahead and choose this free ebook and there it is. I'll go ahead and enter in a title for this. Great, and next thing, I'm gonna follow my own advice and enable list view. So I'll go ahead and click right here to enable list view, and this is everything that makes up this conversion item. So this is using a cadence row, and you can see this is just a cadence row, and we have two columns. This is the first one. It has that image as the background, and here's the second one where we have a heading, a little snippet of text, and a form underneath it. Let's go ahead, instead of focusing on styling in uh, one of these, because you're probably already familiar with the WordPress block builder, instead, let's focus on the settings that we have and the options for for these different conversion items, because that's where the real power of this is. So I'll go through them one by one, but there's a few that I really wanna show you. So we already went through the launch triggers right here. And so, for example, a custom link, you choose that, and all you have to do is put, put this at the end of your link, and it will have a link actually trigger this. It's really cool. So we have these options right here. I'll just go ahead and choose on load. Okay, let's go to the conversion settings. This is just going to remind you of the type of conversion that you're creating, a pop-up, a slide-in, or a banner, just like that. And if you wanted analytics for this particular pop-up, here's something that is really powerful. It's called the conversion goal. And so what is the conversion goal? It's going to be something different depending on the purpose of what you've created. So for this, it would obviously be when someone fills out the form, but if you have a pop-up where there's an actual button, you could choose clicking a button as well. So since this one is submitting a form, we'll choose that. And then you can toggle this on. I think everyone would want this toggled on. Once the form is filled out, the pop-up will disappear. Or once the button is clicked, the conversion item will disappear. So you can toggle this on or off. Then we have the repeat control, which is very important for a product like this. And this is going to be, if someone's seen this 
Are they gonna see it again? And when are they gonna see it again? And you have lots of different options for this. So you can have right here for people that didn't take the action, didn't convert, so didn't fill out the form or didn't fill out the button, you have one time period for them. And then you have a different time period for people that did fill out the form or click on the button. Next, we have some position settings and you can see for a pop-up, this would be where you want this. Is it on the top left corner, the top right corner, on the bottom? How do you want it? So uh, it's set right now to center and the vertical line, it's set to top. I think I would want that middle. There we go, center middle. Uh, there we go. And then we have our size settings right here. So you can control the width of this as well as the height of it right here in the size settings. So we have our container styling as well. So right now we have this row covering everything, but on the background, you can see it's this white. Don't worry, this section here of the white will not show. This is more when you're using the block builder. It's just a visual way of letting you know, do you want to add more content underneath it? But when it's published, if there's no content there, you won't see it. So you can change the color. You can have an image in the background as well as a border. So let's say I wanted a border. Let me put a five on each of these values just like that. And then let's give the border a color. So let's maybe choose this kind of a gray, a gray there. And you can see it's kind of looking nice and warm and fuzzy. I like that border option for pop-ups. And then we have the box shadow options. Okay, now this appears in an overlay. Well, you can control the opacity and the color. You can even have a background image behind this if you wanted to. Let's take a look at the target options. Now these you're gonna be familiar with if you've used the Cadence Pro theme. So you can target the pages. So if you just want this to appear on one particular piece of content or one type of content, for example, all your blog posts, that's what these options are gonna give you right here. And you can also add exclusions. So what's nice is if you have a certain category of content of blog posts, you can create some of these conversion items just for them. And when you pair it with the dynamic content, it gets very powerful. Okay, your target visitors, this is gonna be who sees it, all users logged in, logged out, or specific user roles. Uh, the same thing is you can choose who to hide this from. Uh, right here, we have those same options. So this is good, so you can show different pieces of content based upon whether someone's logged in or logged out. We have target devices, so you can just make this work on the desktop if you wanted, or multiple devices, it's completely up to you. Now we're gonna get into my, I think my favorite feature, and that is the scheduling feature. This is powerful stuff. So we're used to seeing this, right? A date range, I want this to appear on this specific day, and then down here I want this to stop showing on this specific day. That's for timed-based promotions, that's cool. But what I think is amazing is the reoccurring scheduling. So if I wanted this to appear from say 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, I can easily configure that here in these settings. This is powerful stuff and it's gonna open up lots of opportunity, especially for businesses that may have promotions during certain times of the day. So think of a an e-commerce store that they ship same day before 1 p.m. Well, they can have a banner that says that to add that scarcity or a local restaurant that has a lunch special and they want to let you know about that. And But they don't want to let you know about the lunch special when it's already over, but it's reoccurring. So you have all of that flexibility right here. This is really, really cool stuff. Of course, uh, you have some animation options right here. This is, would be your fade in and your fade out. And then you can do some really neat stuff here with the close settings. So that would be this X right here. I don't know, I don't think I've seen this on many of these types of products that, that offer similar features, but not only can it be an X that's standard and normal, I can change it to show text. So if I wanted to say close like that, and then I can style this text out. So if I wanted this to be something really small like 
12 and it says close right there that's good uh, but I can even make it stand out a little bit I can make the font white and I can make this red I probably wouldn't do it like that I think that's actually pretty cool I like that but you can go with an icon if you wanted or a text that's completely up to you and you can place it wherever you want that to be so if you wanted it inside the content um, inside the box right there there you have it actually I like the way that looks that looks really slick if you ask me and we also have options someone can click outside of the box and that will make it close so you have full control over how to have this not appear uh, that's pretty much it you can go ahead and click on publish publish and uh, let's see I believe let me verify I actually set this to appear on load uh, okay if I go up here to my launch triggers on load and I think target pages I didn't choose something here let me just choose the front page uh, just like that let's go ahead and give this one a test I'm gonna go here and there it is so I'm obviously having these all appear at the same time I've got my banner I've got my cookie notice and now I have this and I got to say this looks absolutely beautiful now i want to show you one more very special thing about this and that is the ability to have dynamic content display inside this conversion item so i'm going to create a custom field for blog posts and instead of saying free ebook i'm going to have it say what the whatever text i have entered in that custom post that this is actually appearing on not that custom post a custom field that for the post that this is appearing on so I made a video about uh, dynamic content using cadence blocks recently and this is actually the same installation on that so if you go to these blog posts here how about this one right here and you scroll to the very bottom I'm using advanced custom fields and I created a field named the product name and so I'm gonna go ahead and enter something in for this there it is cadence conversions and what I'm gonna do is make that heading of that pop-up I just created display this when it's appearing on this blog post and then have it say free ebook for everybody else it's going to be pretty trick so let me go ahead and save this custom field and now i'm going to go back into that conversion item to set that up so back to conversions and it was my free ebook opt-in and I have Cadence Blocks Pro in. So when I click on the heading, I'm going to get this icon here to be able to display dynamic content. So I'm going to click on it. And for the content, I'm going to show a post custom field. And that custom field is going to be product name, that custom field that I created. I'm going to expand advanced. And I'm going to make the fallback content say free ebook just like that. So let me enter that. So what this means is when someone sees this on a piece of content that I don't have a value for that custom field, it's going to display free ebook. Let me click on update. There we go. And actually, let me make sure this is set to show when uh, I'm on a blog post okay there we go let's see launch triggers that was the target pages front page I need this to show on my entire website let me go ahead and click on update there we go so now this should appear wherever I am so let me go back to that blog post and let's view it I think it was this one hopefully it was that let me click on view and there it is you can see I have my pop-up and it's showing me that piece of dynamic content that is a value in a custom field that's only on this blog post there's a lot of really cool ways you can use this to show content that you want when someone's on a particular page it's very very powerful stuff so I should be able to go to the home page and get that same um, um, that same pop-up it's actually missing the word ebook maybe I saved that wrong and I can go to all these other pages and it will show that fallback value uh, but if I'm on that blog post let's go ahead and jump back into it uh, it's going to show me 
cadence conversions, the value of the, the custom field. Sorry if I confused you a little bit um, when I'm talking about dynamic content, custom fields and all that kind of stuff. I'll make sure to link to that video down below on using dynamic content inside of the block builder, specifically using the Cadence Blocks Pro plugin. Wow, when you can, when you uh, put all these tools together, it's shaping up to be a really powerful solution with lots of different options. I think for me, I can have my mind spinned already on ways that I'm going to be able to use this. But what's different is I'm going to be able to track conversions. So if I have a call to action appear as someone is on a perf on a blog post, maybe it's about a product and then I have something appear trying to encourage the visitor to click on the button and go to that various product page. Uh, I can track that conversion when it's using one of these so I can see how effective it's, uh, it is, how I can measure its effectiveness. And then that would only work with the dynamic content. There's also options of adding dynamic content sources. So if you're in a blog post, I can have it show you, hey, you might be interested in this blog post and have that dynamically be updated to maybe the most recent blog post. There's lots of really interesting applications for this and it's super easy to use. Uh, anyways, this is just a quick early look, even though it was in depth of cadence conversions. I'd love to hear what you think down in the video description, not in the video description, the comment section. I'm a little off today, but if you don't have cadence, there's a link, a referral link in the uh, video description box. Um, and uh, you click on that, a small amount of money comes here to the channel. Other than that, thank you for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.